I'm Russell Wydick, and you are watching the Dangerous Fishbowl channel. This is Cristalino Convergence. Actually, it might be Cristalino. Either way, the term refers to an open clearing with sparse vegetation, which occurs within a river. Although one could also interpret the concept as an island of clarity in an otherwise muddy river, which can occur due to the confluence of tributaries bearing starkly contrasting tannin concentrations. In their book, The Natural Aquarium, Satoshi Yoshino and Doshin Kobayashi featured a large square tank with a substrate covered in carpeting plants beneath an empty water column about 25 centimeters deep. It was a crystallino indeed, home to a school of quarry cats, but I was skeptical of the notion that an open expanse of river should have such a lack of species diversity, especially in the Amazon. So I remodeled Riparian Oasis, which you can see in its full glory on this channel. And yes, some of those tiger barbs are still living in another tank. The result is what you see here, an open mid-river vista with a number of fish species, cardinal tetras, ember tetras, harlequin tetras, glow light tetras, an emperor tetra, rainwater killifish, a forktail rainbow fish, and an otocinclus cat. The plants are Sterogne repens, which is the very slow growing carpet at center, Cryptocorny balense, which dances elegantly in the current, Cryptocorny wenti, Christmas moss, Helanthium tonellum, previously known as Echinodurus tonellus, which is the carpeting plant on the right, and blackbeard algae. Blackbeard can transform a mundane piece of driftwood into an aquatic version of a bonsai tree, although it spreads virulently, so I don't recommend aquascaping with it deliberately unless your tank is already infested. As the old saying goes, when life gives you lemons, make lemonade. And by the way, don't be afraid to leave some open sand on the bottom, like I have under the root. I've been in enough rivers to know that they're not all completely overgrown with vegetation. After all, some areas are either too deep or too shaded to support aquatic plants. And you know, there's something striking about the emptiness of a crystallino, which emphasizes the sense of depth, particularly when buttressed by a dense thicket, as you can see on the left. This is particularly important in a tank like this one, which only measures 21 centimeters from front to back. The front, by the way, measures 76 by 42 centimeters for a total volume of 67 liters. It should be obvious at this point, on account of the debris which is visible in the water column, that this is an eco-aquarium of the sort that I described in Introduction to the Eco-Aquarium. It has no filtration, just a 90 gallon per hour power head. There is no CO2 supplementation, although I do occasionally dose with Seachem Flourish, not to be confused with Flourish XL. Lighting is a 30-inch Beamswork Daylight LED. It's the pure white variety that they made before introducing those irritating actinic blue highlights that show off all the debris. And for its part, the substrate is pool sand. Still photos are available at the link in the description. Oh, and by the way, this tank adorns the wall side of my dining table. You know you're an aquarium addict when you can't even have dinner without admiring your aquatic pets. I hope you also enjoy watching them for the rest of this video. Thanks for listening.